A very happy Monday morning to you all. It's very nice to be here with you. Um, dude, we just got snow, guys. Snow. It's the middle of September and we got snow. What is going on? It's been freezing cold. We've had to wear sweaters and coats and almost mittens, guys. This is, I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for it. Um, hopefully you guys are because, well, I guess fall, winter, they are coming. It's not my favorite time of year, but I know some of you love it. You know, the, the, mocha lattes the pumpkin spice uh everything um you know you got you got sounds of uh soundtracks in the background we used to listen to emma um, by rachel portman that's still my favorite soundtrack of all time little women uh the the what the 1996 version i think uh, i think that's thomas newman also beautiful those, those really sounds of my childhood um you can find them on youtube if anyone wants to check them out emma is emma is the sound of me I, it, we, we, we always joke about it when i was in high school in omaha uh, I used to listen to that like ad nauseum like all day long. And we we joked that someday, maybe a hundred years from now, that house, which <laughs> probably will still be there a hundred years from now, uh, will be haunted by the sounds of the Emma soundtrack because I would play it really like the whole day. So it's kind of the the soundtrack of my life in many ways. But it actually is beautiful. It's very calming. And um, I think you'd like it. That's Emma from uh Rachel Portman. Um, Matt, unfortunately can't come today. Uh, Matt is ill again and he had to have a minor surgery or actually maybe a major surgery. Um, he had to have a lobotomy done because he doesn't like Thanksgiving dinners. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> but no, I'm not kidding about the surgery. He did actually have surgery. Um, so please keep him in your prayers. I texted him today. He, he's doing all right. He's going to be out of the hospital. I think today, maybe tomorrow. Um, but in need of your prayers, it sounds like he did get something fixed that will, um, that has been bothering him for a bit. Um, so hopefully he will be completely on the mend and, um, hopefully back next week. But, um, but again, please, um, you know, say, say an Ave for him as he, um, continues to be on the mend. And, um, as anyone knows, anyone who's had surgery, uh, it's no fun. It's, it's really not fun though in the u.s you do get a little bit better pain medication and here in germany i had my wisdom teeth pulled and they gave me tylenol which was um kind of disappointing but i guess probably long run better for my health um anyway um so i'm going solo today and I had a couple topics i'm not going to go too long today i gotta go watch the kids again and matt's not here so i'm not going to bore you all and i'm going to warn you this is a warning everybody warning there might be kevin rance coming okay so I know some of you don't like the Kevin rants. So if you don't like the Kevin rants, then go ahead and tune in next week where Matt will calm me down a little bit. But one of the topics that I wanted to cover is the recent interview Tucker Carlson did with a quote unquote historian named Daryl Cooper. Now I am a generally a fan of Tucker Carlson. I don't like all of his, you know, politics. I don't like all of his opinions, but I think he typically tells the truth and has on very interesting guests and has interesting opinions, which I yeah, basically agree with. Not all of them, obviously, but 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 many. And I find him entertaining and I find him a good communicator, etc. I know, of course, many of you disagree. That's fine. I did. So I, I I listened to a lot of his podcasts, not all of them, just the ones that that intrigued me. And I listened the other day to one with a a guy they call uh, an historian daryl cooper now i've heard other historians say that well why is he called an historian because he hasn't actually written any historical books he just does a podcast so i don't really know um he's been really kind of destroyed by the historical world here in the last few weeks since the podcast because podcast went mega viral um and for once i'm going to absolutely side with the mainstream. I think it's one of the dumbest podcasts I have ever heard. <laughs> and I mean, like it was weird. It was like, this guy was just pulling out things and, and really bizarre, really. And so, so it's about world war two. I'm sure many of you have heard about it already, or maybe, you, maybe you've listened to it. And the, the big thing that came out of it was he called Winston Churchill, the, the, the biggest villain of world war two. He, said that pretty much in, in, in this podcast, I haven't listened to all this guy's podcast. I'm saying in this one podcast, right? I don't know all of his views. I can only judge it based on this one podcast. And in this podcast, he doesn't mention really any of the evils of Nazi Germany, except that they, they killed many people on the Eastern front because they couldn't handle so many prisoners, 
which okay yeah i think that's true but that was it like that was it he didn't mention any of the murdering of jews or of catholics or of you know the persecution of the church or of the murder of um you know the insane of the elderly of, of the ill of you know people who were uh had down syndrome who were autistic etc these are facts they are facts you can find these everywhere this isn't just the mainstream this is you can find this published by the catholic church for goodness sake one of the main people who fought against them was i can never remember his name but it was a, a bishop in i think he was from where was he from um Mannheim. ah see this is terrible i always i always forget names anyway it was a catholic bishop who was the main one who fought against the euthanasia and actually brought the, the the nazis to their knees to a point where they actually had to slow it down or at least publicly the nazis were evil okay not all of them not every person sure there were some people who were in the army some generals i mean a really interesting book is the, the church of spies it, it tells you about how some of the main generals in the army tried to overthrow hitler on several occasions tried to kill him with the support of the vatican now the ss was in general very different they just wanted to murder people and were insane and oftentimes on drugs like hitler himself I'm sorry, if you're disagreeing with these things, then where are you finding your facts from? And this is the crazy thing is this guy, he states all these things. He doesn't have any evidence. He doesn't back it up with any support. I have a friend who has worked in the archives in Munich, okay? He is a Munich historian. He's writing his doctorate right now in Munich. He came on a show and said, you know, the Nazis were the bad guys. And still we had people in the comment section say, oh yeah, he's just brainwashed. What an idiot. Um. Okay, he's a traditional Catholic, been a traditional Catholic his entire life. I've known him for almost 10 years. One of the best guys I know. And he's an historian in Munich. And he still knows and understands that, no, yeah, the Nazis were bad. Now, on the other side, I do think Churchill was a bad guy. And I think Churchill did many evil things. I totally agree with that. I think Churchill was a villain. Totally. I think roosevelt was a villain i think he allowed the war to happen he wanted the war to happen he pushed the war to happen and then he you know all the other things he, he abused the peace you know he, he made treaties with stalin and churchill that were terrible for germany um, terrible for europe in general because he didn't care he was not a moral person you, you know talk about truman dropped you know atomic bombs i am not at all saying england or america or the allies were good they committed war crimes at many times. You look at Dresden firebombing. This is true. This is exactly so. Father McKenna, you know, he did the podcast about the Hegelian dialectic, where it has to be one side or the other. No, <laughs> they're both evil. Why is this so hard to understand? The Nazis weren't good. Guys, I've lived in Germany for eight years now. I've been to Dachau. I've seen the list of priests who were killed. There is evidence. Now, you can talk about whatever numbers you want. I'm not going to mention it here because I will be deplatformed because it's actually illegal to talk about some topics. I don't know the exact numbers. Maybe some are exaggerated about whatever we want to, want to talk about. But it happened. This happened. And it's, it's just an absolute absurdity to come out and act like Hitler's this good guy. He's not. He was an evil, evil person who wanted to, you know, first of all, okay, sure. Maybe he wanted, if you want to say 1930, he was just, you know, trying to do the best for his country. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But very early on, he was persecuting Jews and Catholics and others. He was exterminating people by 1939. Where's the, I mean, how do you possibly excuse that? How do you possibly say Churchill? Did Churchill have extermination camps? No, he didn't. Yes. Did he bomb Dresden and firebomb it? Did, did the British, there's another really good book I actually read at the advice of my brother. It's called the Bomber Mafia. And it's really fascinating because it's actually the entire, 
idea, the story of how the Americans entire plan, their entire strategy was to have, um, what was the word to have, um, sp specific targeted bombing. You know, they, they, they wanted to target one building say, you know, they, they, they did everything they possibly could to find the technology to be able to bomb, you know, one manufacturing warehouse or whatever. The British were just like, no, nah, no, nah, blow it all up. But you can also kind of understand it because the British were being bombed by the Nazis, you know, since 1940. So they had more in the game. They, 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 they were more upset about it. I'm not saying it's right. It's totally immoral. It is a war crime. Churchill was bad. Not even was he just bad. He was a bad commander. It's, it's a bizarre thing that, that, that because the British won, they've rewritten the history and Churchill has become this great hero. No, it's like Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln's is the greatest president of all time. What? Are you serious? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Not even remotely. But just saying that Abraham Lincoln was bad doesn't mean you can just then say, well, since he was bad, then the rebels were good. Ipso facto, just because. No. Why is this? I don't understand why this is so hard to understand. I'm not some genius here, guys. I mean, it, they're both bad. Axis were bad. Allies were bad. Russians were terrible. Probably the worst. R Russians and China definitely killed the most people. The communists, sure. Okay, you want to you want to say the communists are the worst in the war? I can totally buy that. Stalin was the most evil. Okay, Hitler second. Sure, fine. Or third. You want to put Mao second? Okay, putting Churchill first. Come on, give me a break. It's just not true. Bad guy, yeah. Evil guy, sure. Did terrible things, absolutely. The worst villain of World War II. Give me. a break it's just stupid a lot of the things this guy said was just like I'm, I'm sitting there shaking my head and i've done a lot of research i'm no historian so research is the wrong word i've listened to a lot of podcasts right i've read a lot of books about world war ii i live in germany okay and i i don't like the germany you know whips themselves because of what happened 80 years ago that's that's ridiculous but what happened was bad, objectively bad, evil. And anyone trying to tell you otherwise that, that Hitler was this, this great hero of the West, you've been duped. You watched some YouTube video that must have been produced amazingly. I, I don't even understand. I don't know. Hitler was, he was a socialist. I mean, sure, he was a nationalist. Hitler was whatever it took to gain power. Hitler was a lot like Bergoglio, right? He just, you know, he'll do whatever it takes. He doesn't care. At one point, sure, if, if it helps him to be nationalistic and to, to pound his chest and say, we will, we're going to save Germany, then you do it. If it helped to say we're, we're, we're in it for, you know, the people and, you know, that the individual doesn't matter, then he would do it. And, and just, I mean, read a book, please, or, or come to Germany. Please, I'll sit down with you with my friend and we'll have a chat about how the Nazis weren't the good guys. And Tucker Carlson should be ashamed of himself because, I mean, during this podcast, it's so bizarre. Like, Tucker's like, you know, I don't, I don't mind if you have on a guy who has, you know, different opinions. That, I think that's totally fine. And I, I, I respect that even. And I respect even if Tucker's kind of like, okay, that's interesting, fine. But no, Tucker, during this interview, he's like, I think you're like the most important historian of all time. You know, I, I'm exaggerating, but not much. Absurd. It's absolutely absurd. Who is this guy? He does a podcast and he he's saying that the worst thing the Nazis did was to ha capture too many prisoners and not would know what to do with them in the East. Um, based on what? What's that based on? I mean, like, I, I just don't even get it. I mean, are you saying that the eugenics program wasn't the worst thing? That's not worse than, you know, prisoners dying. Why do people just like rush over eugenics? That's that's proven. No one even I, I have not yet heard a Nazi apologist and they exist. They're going to comment on this video. I'm sure I have not yet heard one of them deny that Hitler was a eugenicist who was trying to murder people he deemed unfit to live does that sound like a hero does that sound like a good person does that sound like a christian what, what are these people you know like, oh yeah hitler died as a good catholic 
are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Stupid podcast. I can't even believe how dumb that podcast was. I mean, sure, he said some things that were true. And again, saying that the allies were, were also bad. Yep. I am totally on board with that. It, that's true. I think like the whole Western world lost its soul during World War II. True. Truman dropped the bombs in Japan. I've said that many times. I think that's when the U.S. stopped having any even semblance of being good. But but that doesn't, again, look at the Hegelian dialectic. That doesn't mean, okay, because that happened, because America was bad, then, well, of course, then the, the Nazis must be the good guys. Give me a break. Okay, I'm done. I'm done ranting. Rant over. Everyone can um, unmute. I'm sorry, guys. Just the, I, I live here. I've done a lot of reading and listening about this stuff, and it just, <laughs> I just have a hard time listening to people who watch one YouTube video or did one podcast about, you know, oh, nope, the Nazis were the good guys. Oh, man, boils my blood. Anyway, the second topic that I want to brush on quickly, because it's not honestly as interesting as this one. Um, <laughs> this was so bizarre. And honestly, this is a little harder. This would be better on a video podcast. I probably could have actually done video because Matt's not here, but but I didn't. So um, you guys are fortunate about that. Don't have to see my face. But... The video of, of Biden, and I'm sure people have probably seen this, of Biden putting on the MAGA hat. Who's seen that? Have you guys seen that? You know, he goes into this, I think it's a, it's a so it's, he goes into a, a firehouse, fire station. What is it? See, I've been gone from, from the U.S. too long. I forget these words. And there's a group of people and, and someone shouts out. He goes up next to this guy with a, with a MAGA hat. Make America Great Again hat. And some people say, put it on the hat, put it on. And I think at first he kind of is like, no, no, no. And they're like, put it on. You're like, they yell at him. And he does. He just takes it and he puts it on. You know, and, and, he, and he's like smiling at everybody. And the guy next to him, this old guy is like, yeah, what did he say? He's like, I'm proud of you now, you old fart. <laughs> Sorry, I just found that kind of funny. And um, probably shouldn't. That's my childish humor. Sorry, guys. Um, And, and Biden just... You know, he's, he's smiling at it. He's taking pictures with everyone with a, with a Trump hat on. And th the rumor is, at least, that he took the hat with him. Like, he left and he took it with him. Biden. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Like, I, I know it was a pretty big story for, for a bit. Like, people, a lot of people talked about it. But I think it wasn't even big enough. I, to me, it seemed like, okay, there's two options. Option Number one is probably the most likely. Biden is is really truly not there. Like his brain is gone. He can't even understand the difference between him and Trump and a hat and a lollipop. You know, I, I think his brain is just fried. I think that's definitely possible. That's probably the most likely. Or he dislikes Kamala Harris so much. And what they did to him, they, they, they stabbed him in the back. I mean, come on. They, they totally Julius Caesared him. Not like he should be president, but they did. You know, <laughs> I mean, I don't like any of them, but they, they stabbed him in the back. The entire party. Maybe this was like him saying like, hey, yeah, you know what? Fine. You know, what? you're going to you're going to kick me out. You're going to disrespect me. Then sure. Then I'm going to, you know, I want people to vote for Trump. I want Trump to win. And I want to actually show you by wearing his hat. And how wild would it be? How wild would it be if that's the October surprise and Joe Biden comes out in support of Donald Trump? Can you imagine? Oh, man. Beautiful. And honestly, right now, I think it could happen. E either because Biden is just, you know, he's lost his mind or because he actually dislikes Trump less than he dislikes his own party. I think it could actually happen. And it's one of the craziest things I've considered in a long time, but I think it actually could. I think Trump's going to win anyway, unless something crazy happens and maybe they murder him. That wouldn't shock me. But I think, I think it's pointing towards Trump. And again, not like I love Trump. I certainly like him better than Kamala. But I think it's possible. It's possible. In the next four weeks, Joe Biden 
comes out in support of Donald J. Trump. And if that happens, I am going to go crazy. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm not going to eat my hat because that, that, that would be, no, no thanks. I'll, uh, I'll hop up our, our three flights of stairs on one foot. How about that? Yeah. You guys want to see that? I'll do it. Crazy. What a weird world, you know? Everyone loves Hitler and the Nazis. Biden is a fan of Trump now. <laughs> it is truly a bizarre world. It is truly a bizarre world. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm done for the day. I'll come back next week with Matt. Um, later today, this is obviously being published on Monday. Later today at 2 p.m. Eastern time in the States, we'll be having a live show with Mario Dirksen and Father Thomas Ojeka, perhaps other guests as well, to discuss the latest nonsense from Bergoglio, quote-unquote, Pope Francis, um, pretty much saying that there's one God, but all religions actually worship that one God, which is, um, yeah, obviously heretical, but also just as obviously something that Bergoglio has said all the time and has been said very clearly since Vatican II. But for some reason, right now, this last thing that he said the semi trads, the the Catholics who you know I think want to be Catholic but still follow Bergoglio as Pope, they can't stomach it. Like this is for some reason seeming to be the point where they're saying, "Nope, this we can't do this, we can't do this," which is good. I certainly hope you know they stick with that and say, "Okay, okay, he can't be Pope, and if he's not the Pope, then huh, what about all of them since 1958? What about the entire framework from where Francis?" bases his entire belief system and faith on. That is, of course, the Second Vatican Council. So stay tuned for that. Mario will join me as well as Father Thomas Ojeka. And we hope to see you there as well. Join us in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Um, is Bergoglio a heretic? I bet I know what most of you would say. Until next time, God bless you.